My name is John DeBartolo. I'm a local attorney, and I'm involved with a citizens group loosely referred to as Save Northampton's Main Street. It's a group of citizens who have some concerns about the changes to Main Street that have been proposed by the city. We're going to be offering an alternative design to the design that was selected by the city, and it is my goal to roll through some uh, images, some architect, architect renderings uh, that will show uh, what we're proposing to the city. As it stands right now, we're, we're hoping to present to City Council on Thursday night at the City Council meeting. Uh, it will be put up for a vote. Uh, if we're allowed to present, then a presentation will uh, be something similar to what you're going to see right now. Uh, we're going to start with uh, an overview image of uh, a map, and you'll see on your screen uh, the purple line uh, that extends in kind of a Y across the screen is our existing bike trail. And then there's an arrow that says bike path loop. You can see in the center of the screen. Uh, that's what we're proposing to build to connect the bike trail to Main Street. And then the next slide is a close up uh, of that area. So again, the purple line represents the bike trail and then the darker purple with the arrow indicating the bike path loop is showing two different connections. Uh, and then the, the zoom that you see at the base of the screen uh, shows how those connections meet up with Main Street and where there'll be two separate areas of bicycle parking uh, that will be added to uh, near the bus stop by the Academy of Music and near the garage behind Thorns. This proposal is based on a design that was done uh, by the professionals uh, tool design retained by the city. Tool Design initially prepared a number of different renderings, uh, and one of them was called Alternative 1B. Uh, that's the design that we're working with. So we're taking Tool Designs, Alternative 1B, and we're adding to it what you currently see on the screen. I'll go through it in greater detail. Uh, the design that we're offering as an alternative is to address traffic density, pedestrian safety and accessibility, bicyclist safety and accessibility, and federal funding eligibility. Uh, I'm going to go through the design in three separate sections of Main Street. There's a 64 foot wide section that's west of Crafts Avenue. So from the Smith College area down to Crafts Avenue. There's the section in the middle that's 106 feet wide that's between Crafts Avenue and Pleasant Street. And then there's another 64 foot wide section east of Pleasant Street. The entirety of this redesign, both the proposal by the city and what we're talking about, is about four-tenths of a mile area of Main Street. So the next image we're going to see is that first 64-foot wide section. This is the area west of Crafts Avenue. Uh, the design that we're proposing, which was drawn this way by Tool Design, uh, is already de facto four lanes. Anyone familiar with the area knows that there are four lanes of travel, although they're not clearly marked in that area. So we would have those four lanes marked and we would add to it a painted lane, a shared lane for bikes. And you can see it on both sides of the street in the drawing on the screen. Uh, we would add bump outs uh, at the crosswalk in front of City Hall, uh, signal lights, and potentially raising that crosswalk to be a speed hump. There'll be covered bicycle parking in Pulaski Park, kind of on the back of where the bus stop is. Pulaski Park is already accessible from the bike trail through the rear of the park. Uh, due to some, some forward thinking by the city when they redid Pulaski Park. Uh, and then there'll be a one-way bike lane down Crafts Avenue that would connect to the bike path that we referred to in that earlier drawing. This is a way for cyclists to be able to access the bike path, which is uh, what is considered uh, by the experts a well-connected bicycle network. Uh, and this is that first section, so not much in the way of changes other than what you're going to see is painted lanes for cyclists, like they have in the Concord, New Hampshire model, and painted lanes delineating the two lanes in each direction for the cars. We would then move into the next middle section. That's the 106-foot wide section between Crafts Ave and Pleasant Street. Uh, that is already uh, four lanes. The change that you would expect would be four lanes with no center island. There's currently some space in the middle there that would be eliminated. And the four lanes would be clearly painted and, and delineated in a way that they aren't right now. Also, we would add separate painted bike lanes in both directions. So again, we'd be retaining two lanes of travel in each direction, adding bike lanes. 
Um, the design that's being proposed by the city would shrink this to one lane in each direction with a center turning lane. And I'll address momentarily the issues of traffic density that, that could be complicate uh, travel through Northampton. So this version uh, is going to have a one-way bike lane up South Street. So that loop that was in the earlier diagram uh, with the purple lines was a path down Crafts Avenue and then up South Street uh, to connect to the Main Street area. Again, this area will have covered bike parking in the space between the parking garage and Thorns in the area where if you're familiar with downtown Northampton, where we have the Tuesday market. We would add bump outs to the crosswalks, signal lights, and raise to speed humps the rainbow crosswalk and the crosswalk in front of Bueno. Uh, we would remove angled parking from the north side and replace it with parallel parking. In Tool Design's version, they actually retain the angled parking on the north side of Main Street in that section. But if we're removing that, we can widen the sidewalk. And the hope is to add an ADA compliant ramp to the shops nearest Center Street. So there are three shops there that where there are stairs currently and there's not enough space to make a, a proper ramp. But if we eliminate that angled parking for parallel parking, uh, it's gonna provide some additional space and hopefully we'll be able to get that ramp and to make those buildings accessible. Now I know that angled parking uh, is desirable to folks with disabilities and some elderly folks, uh, but trading off the angled parking in that space seems a, a fair trade to get that kind of accessibility. And of course, the final point on this section would be we're going to include separate painted bike lanes that are adjacent to the travel lanes. Now, this is different from what the city has proposed, and they're proposing what's called a protected bike lane that would be between parked cars and the sidewalk, so adjacent to the sidewalk instead of adjacent to the travel lane. The one that we're proposing, as you see on the screen, is the same type of bike lane that they have in Concord, New Hampshire, that's been discussed both by the city and by the uh, news media covering uh, this issue. The next section would be the next 64 foot wide section east of Pleasant Street. So this would be from the, the main intersection in Northampton over to the Market Street area. Uh, this is 64 feet wide and it operates as one lane in each direction right now and we see no reason to alter that. So it's going to stay one lane in each direction. Uh, what you would expect to see differently is it'll of course be a painted bike lane uh, so that cyclists have a safer access to that area of the street and we will bump out the curb around the, around the crosswalks, add signal lights, and raise the crosswalk in front of Local Burger into a speed hump. The purpose of these types of changes uh, are for the four reasons that I said at the onset. There's traffic density, pedestrian safety and accessibility, bicyclist safety and accessibility, and the federal funding issue. This entire plan uh, is hoping to get about $20 million plus of federal funding for these types of changes. Now, when Tool Design drew Alternative 1B, they had indicated initially that it might not get the funding because it didn't have the protected bike lane. Our research has shown that if we were to build the type of connection to the well-connected bicycle network, our bike trail, and provide covered parking, that it actually would be eligible for that federal funding. So without having to add that four-tenths of a mile long protected bike lane, we would be able to still get the federal funding using all this work already done by tool design. So to address each of those areas briefly, traffic density by shrinking the lanes to one in each direction with a middle turning lane in the sections that are currently operating as two lanes in each direction is going to increase traffic. That is to say it is going to make it more dense. And this is not an opinion of concerned citizens, it's the opinion of the experts retained by the city. In their report, they indicated that twice a day during rush hours and on Saturdays, that traffic is expected to back up at some of the intersections and be more dense through the middle of downtown. Uh, that's because there are four main arteries that lead, that lead into this section of town. Uh, Route 66 leads into this section, uh, Route 10, and then on uh, King and Pleasant Street from traffic going north and south on 91 leads into this very short section that's less than four tenths of a mile there where these arteries are leaning in. And to avoid that kind of traffic congestion, we need to retain that two lanes in each direction in this area. Now, one of the reasons that the city has suggested it's okay to have this kind of traffic jam happening 
is that it will slow traffic and slower traffic is safer for pedestrians. And no one can disagree with slowing traffic or that slower traffic is uh, better for pedestrians. Our plan would slow traffic for pedestrians all the time. The raised speed humps, the traffic signals, the bump outs would make all the crosswalks safer than they are now and cause traffic to slow, regardless of whether it's rush hour. So the city has suggested that at rush hour we'll have traffic in slower conditions, but the alternative is when there's no rush hour, then traffic would be moving more quickly. Under the alternative we propose, it would be slowed permanently at all times of day to make it safer for pedestrians. Now, one of the other things that the city has indicated would happen with this additional traffic would be what's called a road diet. And when they refer to a road diet, what they mean is that there'll be fewer cars that'll choose to go through our main street because of the traffic situation. And that assumes two different things. Uh, it assumes that there is a way around Main Street for people who have to make that trip. And there's simply not. Unfortunately, Northampton's not laid out in a grid. And we don't have what's called bypass routes, ways to get around the downtown like many other cities have, like Concord, New Hampshire has, for example. Most cities laid out in a grid have alternative ways of getting through an area if there's traffic in an area that you want to avoid. Here in Northampton, we don't really have that option. Uh, the, the other issue for a road diet would be the presumption that trips being made uh, are discretionary in nature. That is to say, some people are traveling to commute to work, some people are traveling to appointments, some people are traveling to shop, but other people are just traveling for some other less important reason that they would just not make the trip to avoid the traffic. Now, there's no data to support that there's a high degree of discretionary trips through downtown Northampton. And I would suggest that there's probably not a, dis a lot of discretionary trips. Our Main Street Northampton is a state highway. It's Route 9 and it's the only way across the river in this area. And by the city's own acknowledgement of the traffic jams that will ensue during rush hour, most of these trips are mandatory and not discretionary. So I don't really think we can expect a road diet I would insert at this point that our group has asked the city uh, to perform a trial run, not of our plan, but of their plan. And the city is not interested in a trial run and has indicated that it would be too expensive to do that. So in lieu of a trial run, we're offering this alternative, which shouldn't have any adverse impact on traffic and should increase the safety for pedestrians and cyclists. To get onto those areas, the pedestrian safety, as I've alluded to, will be created by the traffic common conditions and the changes to the crosswalks. There'll also be wider sidewalks as part of this plan, which is also beneficial for pedestrians. Also, we'd be avoiding the city's plan of that bike lane adjacent to the sidewalk. That would be a new hazard to pedestrians that doesn't currently exist. Anyone who's traveled to a larger city where they have these lanes next to the sidewalk has seen the motorized bicycles flying through there and just the speed of bicycles in general as pedestrians would have to cross that area to get to their parked car. Children, elderly people getting out of the passenger side of vehicles would have to navigate that bike lane as v bikes were whizzing by just to get to the sidewalk. So pedestrian safety is enhanced both from its current situation and significantly from what's been proposed. Now, as far as cyclist safety is concerned, this plan that we are offering is the safest way for cyclists. What's been referred to as a protected lane sounds safer for cyclists, but it's not actually protected. It would be removed by a row of parked cars from traffic, but cyclists would have to traverse nine different crosswalks and six side streets, three on each side, that are uncontrolled intersections. No stop signs, no traffic lights. So as vehicles are taking right turns into the side streets or pulling out of side streets, they would have to pull across that bicycle lane just to see around the row of parked cars. There's a number of studies which indicate that there are more collisions at intersections when you install these protected bike lanes. And members of the city council have put forward some of these studies that are intended to suggest they're safe, but the conclusions of the very studies indicate there are more collisions at intersections. Now, I have heard said that, well, there's more collisions, but it's because there's more people riding bicycles. It increases ridership to have these lanes that's still not an acceptable alternative. When more people take public transit, it doesn't cause more bus accidents. More people traveling on bicycles in these lanes through intersections means more people getting hit by cars. 
more people who are our friends and neighbors. It's not the safest way to get through. As you see on your screen again, we've got the bike trail. That is the safest way to get th through downtown. When I said earlier, there's no bypass route. There's no bypass route for cars, but there's a bypass route for cyclists. If you want to avoid the downtown to safely get from East Hampton or from Leeds over to Amherst, you can do it by avoiding downtown and being on that bike trail. You'll have better accessibility under this plan by the bike loop that we'd be installing and the places to park your bike. And if you want to ride through downtown, there'll be painted bike lanes to do so. But the truly safest way is to stay as part of a well-connected bike network, which is the bike trail that we already have. It's one of the reasons why the uh, ridership that's been suggested will increase may not. If you look at a major city that doesn't have a way to get around by bicycle and they install a network, a well-connected network of protected bike lanes, that increases ridership because there's now a way to get around that there wasn't before. But we already have this way to get around. So it's unclear whether we'll have any kind of increase in ridership or whether it would be significant. If it is, it's likely to lead to additional collisions at intersections. The last issue that I'd mentioned at the onset was the federal funding. How do we pay for all this? And the suggestion that it requires these protected bike lanes uh, is not fully the story because there are exceptions for areas just like ours where there's no bypass route where it's not the safest option. By adding a bike loop that we have on your screen there, and if we could look at that close up one more time uh, of what it would look like if you look at downtown, it's a way to get downtown that would be an exception to get the federal funding to do this project. Everyone wants a vibrant downtown. Everyone wants a pedestrian friendly downtown with cafe seating and wider sidewalks, high visibility crosswalks, art crosswalks, more trees. This design, by the way, preserves 25 trees that would be eliminated in the city's version. Now the city plans to plant new trees, but they'd remove 25 mature trees to do their version. We would lose just one tree to do this version. And again, that was as designed by Tool Design. We all want that better downtown. We all want the vibrant downtown. And I think we're all on the same page. We all want safer pedestrians, safer cyclists, and people being able to enjoy our downtown. And we implore the city to take a hard look at this, to make the most of the work done by their designers, and see if this is a design that can be implemented.